Hello people, my name is Sin the Dragon, and welcome to another episode of A Free Review, where I give you guys a review of a game that you can get for free right now. So today I'm going to be reviewing the game Unturned. It's a zombie survival game in which you're placed into an open world and your job is to basically kill zombies, while also picking up objects such as food and weapons. It was developed by a guy named Nelson Sexton, a 17 year old who happens to live in Canada, and also worked on the game Roblox, which is where I believe he got more of the Flash game blocky influence as far as graphic design goes. Unturned runs on the Unity game engine, which is known for being supported across multiple platforms like Xbox and PlayStation, and even run games for mobile devices. But they're also known for running Flash games, which the graphic style and control scheme of the game are very prevalent to the sort of basic concept that I believe the developer was going for. The controls are very simplistic and can be compared to the controls that the typical computer game take on. Your movement is dictated by using WASD, and most of the interactions with the world, like picking up objects, you use the F key. A game that I could recommend that happens to be a Flash game, but takes on the same basic concept, is a game called Blockhead More Rooms. It's a series that takes the same premise of killing zombies, but you play in a horde mode style level where you are in a room, and you're surviving endless waves of zombies. If you want to play the game for yourself, I'll put the link in the description down below so you can play that game and experience it for yourself. Now there are some things that irked me about the game, one of them being that when you're in a scenario where you're being chased by zombies that are marginally faster than your character, having to look straight at the object and press F to pick it up breaks the flow of movement and fights against your mission to stay alive. In Boxhead, the map was a 3D world on a 2D plane. This means that to your character, the map is viewed in 3D, but when you walk over a weapon, the weapon will always be picked up. It would also automatically change your loadout. You don't have to directly face the object and press F, then press 4 in your inventory just to pick up the weapon. Another thing that I noticed is that the weapons have such a low amount of ammo, and finding ammo is such a rare occurrence. Now, while some may argue that this is to drive the realism home, the reason someone would play the game wouldn't be to live out a reality where they have a very large chance of being killed or eaten trying to save themselves. A person wants to play the game to live out a world where they survived and came on top because of their own wit and determination, not perished because, well, I guess someone couldn't afford more than seven bullets. Now, one of the things I liked about the game were the use of cars in this scenario, albeit that the controls were a little shifty. It gives the player a safer alternative to fighting the zombies if he used correctly. Now, you do get a very little amount of gas in the car. You may get about 5 to 10 percent. But this is a little point of realism that I think is actually pretty accurate. From a general point of view, it looks like you're the only survivor in a world full of zombies, which means that everybody has died, but this also gives the possibility that people had siphoned off gas, stealing the gas from other cars, or people just drove really far and got out of the car and died, which means that it did give you an opportunity to escape the zombies, but it didn't give you the easiest way out as far as travel, because eventually, with that little amount of gas, you will have to get out, and you will have to walk again to find more objects. Now, for the flaws that I did point out that some people may not even agree with, I have to say that the game wasn't that bad, especially since it was such a basic concept that it didn't really track away from what it was supposed to be. It didn't give you these side missions and this whole story about who this guy was. It's literally just an open world game where you decide your destiny. You decide how many times you die or how long you live. And I do have to give props to Nelson Sexton for just making this game in general. He made it all by himself at 17 years old. I mean, being a 17 year old myself, I do understand that even making YouTube videos like this, there's a thing called having limited resources and limited time. And the fact that he could create a game at 17 years old and have it greenlighted on Steam is just a feat that I can greatly appreciate. So my final verdict is go get the game. It is obviously free and it's also the smallest game file I've probably ever had. It's 153 megabytes, which means any computer that you can probably pick up is going to run it. So that's a very convenient thing for people who just don't have enough money to get a high-end PC. You can literally pick up that crappy laptop that's in the corner of your room and plug it in and you can play this game. And it's very convenient for just anybody who has a computer. But this was obviously just my opinion. If you want to give your opinions, I would really love it if you can put those in the comments down below. So thank you guys for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this next review. If you like what I'm doing here and you want to see more, don't forget to give those like and subscribe buttons a try. Hey, it can't hurt you. And you get a free video every week. So yay! Free videos. This has been going on for way too long. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Stay awesome.